Ms. Hutzler, you're recognized for five minutes. And members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you to discuss China's energy portfolio. I'm a senior fellow with the Institute for Energy Research, a nonprofit organization that conducts historical research and evaluates public policies in energy markets. Secretary Chu and other officials tell us the U.S. is losing the race with China regarding clean energy. That is the very narrow picture of the energy situation in China. China is not leading a clean energy revolution, but instead is leading a global race for all fuels, to fuel an economy growing at 7 to 9 percent per year and to provide a better life for its people. China has a goal of producing 15 percent of its primary en energy consumption from carbon-free energy by 2020. It expects to meet that goal primarily with hydroelectric and nuclear technologies because non-hydro renewables, mainly wind and solar, supply only a small amount of energy on a primary consumption basis. China is planning on hydroelectric power to supply 9 to 10 percentage points of its 15 percent goal, reaching a capacity level of 300 gigawatts, about 50 percent more than it has today. At the pace China is adding hydroelectric capacity, it will have no trouble exceeding that goal by 2020. It currently has twice the amount of hydroelectric capacity that the U.S. has and will have almost four times as much once it reaches its goal. China is expecting nuclear power to contribute up to six percentage points towards its 15 percent goal in 2020. China has 13 nuclear reactors operating and at least half of the units in the world's construction pipeline. Official China nuclear capacity projections are 70 to 80 gigawatts by 2020 and 500 gigawatts of nuclear by 2050. If China meets its 2030 target of 200 gigawatts, it will have twice the amount of nuclear capacity as the U.S. The U.S. has not issued a construction permit for a new nuclear plant since 1979. China's goal for wind in 2020 is 150 gigawatts, and it's almost one-third of the way there. As Mr. Waxman has noted, China now has more installed wind country in the world, but the U.S. is a close second. And because China's wind capacity is not all connected, the U.S. is 30 percent more usable wind capacity than China. China has one-fourth the solar capacity of the U.S. and generates a mere one one-hundredth of a percent of its electricity from solar. Though chastity, it leads the world in solar cell manufacturing, exporting 95 percent of its production. Because manufacturing costs are lower in China, some U.S. solar manufacturers are moving there. Part of China's goal is to be self-sustaining in energy technology and it is learning from U.S. experts in solar energy, nuclear power, and other technologies. For example, China has a goal to enter the global nuclear marketplace by 2013, just a few years from now. China relies on coal for over 70 percent of its energy and over 80 percent of its electricity. The U.S. relies on coal for 21 being 45 percent of its electricity. According to the Energy Information Administration, China will be heavily 25 years from now, generating 74 percent of its electricity from it. With its massive coal use, China will be emitting more carbon dioxide emissions than any country in the world, over 30 percent of the world's total in 2035, and twice the amount the U.S. is. China passed the U.S. in CO2 and recently in energy use. In summary, the Chinese are not fixated solely on green technology. China is on a fast track to bring online new generating units of all types. Because China is endowed with a sizable amount of coal resources and because coal is the cheapest energy source in China, coal-fired generating additions will far outpace those of other technologies. Thank you. I will be happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you, Ms. Hustler, and thank you all for your testimony.